This time on Dogstrip, we get back to Project Dreadnought, our next Gambler 500 rig. In this episode, we peel a Cadillac body from its chassis. We peel a body from an RV chassis. Then we put the two together. On the previous Dreadnought video, we get a long-neglected Cadillac and breathe some life into it. On the previous, previous Dreadnought video, we received a rotten old motorhome and stripped it down to the bare bones. Be sure to watch these videos first, so you are all caught up. For those of you that refused to watch the previous videos, here's the plan. We have a 1964 Cadillac Fleetwood we plan to mount to a motorhome chassis. But first, we have to free the caddy from that unwanted X-frame. Started day two, separating the body from the chassis, and it's like a few degrees above freezing. So, brr. Day three of Cadillac. Not so happy with this, but we'll make do. What you see before you is a piece of long gone GM engineering, the X-Frame. It was primarily used on GM full-size cars from 1958 through 1964. In 1958, this new frame would allow bolt-on body shells to be mounted lower to accentuate the lower, longer, wider styling trend of the day. Side impacts weren't a great thing, especially if you're in a hardtop or a convertible. Other than a few chassis mounts, we plan to keep the driveline and full rear suspension. Who knows, someday down the road we may stuff all of this into a Pinto or a Chevette. Only time will tell. What? He's eating to be noisy. He's noisy. Other than the addition of 38-inch mud tires, the RV was left alone so it could move itself around. Now was the time to strip it down to the bare chassis. Here we have the bare chassis of the motorhome, clearly better built and higher sitting than the GM X-Frame. Now it's out with the chassis and in with the body. Next we convert the front suspension from the RV dually hubs to the non-dually hubs. This opens our options to a wider range of non-dually rims and tires. Just a rotor swap, and it's that easy. Boom. Despite the feline protest, we get back to messing with Hobo's Cadillac. We have also made a significant investment in lifting equipment, a chain hoist, as well as building our own extra, extra tall jack stands. Going up.
Despite the Cadillac body being lifted skyward, we still want to keep it as low to the RV chassis as we can. That means the back seat foot well is going to get some modifications, dog strip style. Now we hack a few massive holes into the good part of the floor for clearance around the RV fuel tanks. Then a few patch panels to plug up those holes so we can lower the car into her final fitment. There she sits, not too shabby. Starting with rust repair in the trunk, we must address some older patch jobs, cut out all the cancer and start putting in fresh steel. After that, we open up those rear fender wells for the big old beefy 38 inch mud tires. All right, so one thing that we've done for a few vehicles now is rock guard undercoating. You spray it everywhere, covers up defects, and it looks good. So this, this one jug has lasted, I think, three, four projects so far, and it's at least 20 years old. Thin it, it's good to use. Let us show you just how bad the rust is on this car and why a Cadillac was within our budget. This is the front passenger cab corner. Every cab corner is like this. Repairs like these take time, days per location. It dragged out, but overall, we're happy with the results. This is the driver's side front cab corner. Copy, rinse, and repeat. A prime example of it doesn't look that bad is this rocker corner. Once you start poking at rust, you'll never know when or where it will end. Another thing to look out for when working on older cars is lead body filler around seam joints. It's had its place, but those days are long over. Once all the rot was removed, this is what we were left with. Replace one piece at a time and we will call this done. As you can see, the back wheels and their placement really messed up the rear quarter panels. In fact, the RV rear axle is nine inches further back than the Caddy. We decided to fix this with a pair of fenders from a Chevy Stepside pickup truck. After a cut, trim, shorten, and lengthen, we have the look figured out. Now, it's onto the other side to do it all over again. Welding is fun, do what you can with steel, but Bondo is your friend. This turned into a long night. Sorry, neighbors. With body work and rust repair done, this is where we will leave you for now. There is plenty of work to go, so stay tuned. Next time on Dog Ship, the hamster goes ice racing again. This time we hit the frozen lake with purpose-built ice racing tires. Old and biased ply, these things have massive studs on them. Seriously, they look like they belong in a Saw movie. These tires make the hamster get up and go. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Are you here to help? All the madness. Jimmy Hopper would be proud.